You know, some people might suggest that the BBC's inevitable decline is really all down to themselves. Seemingly, as a big corporation, they have the luxury of taxpayer-funded money to exactly do what they wish with, of course, their corporation. You have these big presenters like Ken Bruce, who they decided to get rid of, even though he had the most listened to radio station on their channel. But at 72 years old, apparently, middle-aged and white didn't necessarily fix that tick box. Do you see what I mean? So consequently he was let go. It's happening to all sorts of people across the network. Seemingly even the local radio stations with popular regular viewers and listeners, well they just simply let go because apparently they don't necessarily fit the inclusive remit now. Happens to everybody in every single field of the world of work. But now here's an interesting story that I wanted to share with you. And as ever I'd love to know what you think about this because it's absolutely ludicrous when you think. It's going to cost the British taxpayer, you and I, the BBC licence fee payer, a lot of money. And really, it's a shut and closed case. Let me explain. Morning, lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining me today and as ever, thank you for taking the time out. You all right? Yes, thank you so much, not bad myself. Now, you know, I like to share these things because you, you just realise how stupid some people are. You know, when you think about it, I've been in many different companies throughout my years and you know, you get fired, you get hired and you have to accept it. A new broom sweeps, all that sort of stuff. And whether you've worked hard, fitted in, done whatever they've asked, when they decide it's time to go, you get the bullet and I've worked for major companies no explanation given or anything like that I'll share something with you in fact I worked for a newspaper a daily column right for over 10 years and I got fired I didn't get fired I just got you know they didn't accept the copy anymore no apology no nothing that's how it happened and then they asked you to go and speak at journalism college and when I mentioned this and said be you know expect this to happen to you they're stunned oh you can't say that but that's the reality. Now, this should be the reality for this BBC presenter, Maxine Croxall. If you remember, she was, shall we say, less than kind about the former British Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Boris Johnson, and went on air saying she was delighted by the fact that he was now going to be finished as, of course, a politician. She was gleeful, were her words, literally live on air. Naturally, she got suspended because apparently she'd broken their impartiality rules. But now she and amongst other people are suing the BBC for unfair dismissal because they had to reapply for their jobs. Now, to me, the fact that she was suspended said that live on air would be enough to say you broke the BBC rules. Let's draw a line under it. Oh, no, this is now going to go to court. This will cost thousands of pounds. And no doubt because of the weakness of the BBC, she literally could end up with some money. You and I are paying for that. It's as simple as that. So when people talk about we must save the BBC, it's a cherished institution. What I would say is look a little bit closer. It's the people at the actual core that are ruining it, demanding too many high salaries at £1 million plus a year. But according to the boss, Tim Davy, they have to pay the going rate. Tell me, who else has got £1 million for Gary Lineker or Claudia Winkleman? Who in the broadcast sphere right now has that money? Nobody. It's simple fear and they want to waste your money. As for Maxine, she's pushing ahead after a year away of taking endless holidays and deciding exactly what she's going to do to restructure her career. Basically get herself back in the headlines and hopefully get some cash back from the BBC. All courtesy of the British taxpayer. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.